Are you excited about the word today? Yeah. Hallelujah. And let's go before the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word of God. And God, I pray that wisdom and revelation flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. God, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. And God, I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. Holy Spirit, you have the liberty to move up and down every hour, every television screen, every computer screen, every household, every family room, every living room. Move. Have your way. Overwhelm us with your presence. Oh, we yield our hearts to you. Father, I thank you for the youth ministry. I declare their ears are anointed to hear the word of God. Their hearts are good ground to receive the word of God. I lift up every volunteer in there, and I declare they are anointed to speak the oracles of God. And I pray for divine utterance coming out of their mouths. Now, Father, I thank you right now for the people that's, that, that, that's, the people that's hearing my voice right now. And at the sound of my voice, God, they know that you are their Lord. You are their, you are their Father, and they are your sons. They are your daughters, and they understand you, God, and you understand them. Father, your word says it's not the word of God will not return to you, nor no void. Therefore, we thank you in advance for manifestation. We thank you in advance for breakthrough. We thank you in advance for answers. For your word is true. And we give you all the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And Excel Church said, oh, go ahead and shout about that one more time. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of God. Again, thank you, uh, live stream, those of you joining us here online for taking time out of your schedules. Uh, we're into a new series. We had a break there for Easter, but we started off into a new series, and the title of the series is Relationships. And God wants us to thrive in relationships. God does not want us to suffer in our relationships. Now, in relationships, inherent in relationships is, is betrayal. Inherent in relationships is failure. Inherent in relationship is letdowns. Inherent in relationships are slips and falls, but God is there to pick us up. Now, when it comes to relationships, what we have to do is peel back the onion and ask ourselves this question right here. What relationship um, cloth was I cut out of from my father's house? I knew I grew up in the father's house, military father. Um, uh, my mom was in the bank and then she started her own business, fashion business. But you, you, I, I understand the house I came out of. I understand that my father was very uh, 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 to the point, very disciplined, uh, military, uh, a man's man, and uh, sometimes a man of few words. But you knew where he was coming from. But they got a divorce when my um, mother, you know, uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer. And in the process of that, they got a divorce. And, 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 and right there uh, is where someone should have said, Derek, we're going to get you and your sister into therapy. <clears throat> we're going to get you and your sister into therapy so you can understand what's going on. So you don't come out of this taking sides and blaming God and, and blaming dad and, and all this kind of stuff. You thoroughly understand that, that relationships the, the, the sometimes they do break down. And people love one another. They still love one another, but they can't coexist with one another. But no one did that. So I went on to form my opinions about relationships. I went on to form my opinions about uh, uh, how to treat women. I went on to form my opinion about how to carry myself as a, man, as a man. And that all derived out of my father's house. And how you see relationships derives out of your father's house. If you don't think man is supposed to be respected, if, you, if your mother told you all your life that you, you look, you be your own lady, you ain't got to respect, it's going to be hard to come under in a relationship as a wife. Relationships are inherently uh, 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 complex sometimes because we don't understand where the other person came from. And I teach my daughter and I teach my son, I always tell him, you always want to be valued before you feel you're loved. So many times we jump the gun in relationships and we, and we think we're in love. 
and we want to be loved. No. Does he or she value you? Do they respect you? Stop looking for love and start looking for value because in the long run, you're going to want to be valued and respected. Amen? Amen. So we're going to get into uh, this today, and I won't, <clears throat> I won't belabor the point, <clears throat> but this is going to be a fun series. Now, the title for today is Relationships, Jesus and the Father. You know, we're big on, okay, uh, you have a Toyota Camry, you have a, 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 a Lexus, I call them Lex Lugers, you have a, a Mercedes Benz or you have a BMW. If something goes wrong with that car, you don't call your buddy up with the Toyota and say, look in your manual on page 17 and, and, and tell me what's going on with my BMW. No, you pick up your BMW manual to see what the manufacturer has to say about what's going on with your car. And when it comes to diagnosing relationships, when it, comes to, when it comes to navigating relationships, when it comes to what we should expect out of relationships, what better relationship uh, uh, to look at than Jesus and the Father? And, 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 and mine out of that relationship some basic principles we all need to have thriving relationships. Now, uh, I'll be married this year, going on 25 years, but at year seven, we almost got a divorce, and we was born again, tongue-talking, in church, serving, but guess what? We had, we, the, the skills had ran out on how to coexist with one another. Two minds occupying one house, one space, and she had her will. I had my will. She came from a divorce home. I came from a divorce home. She was raised by a single mom. I was raised by my grandparents, and and the goo goo gaga, as it began to wear off, our dysfunction began to lead the marriage. And we didn't hate one another. It was just our dysfunction from our father's house began to lead the marriage, and that relationship began to crumble. And there was, the, and, and, and believe it or not, uh, my wife was not surprised by it because she said, Derek I always thought, just based on my upbringing, uh, 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 my dad was in the house, they were divorced, based on my upbringing, I always thought once you get married, you're always going to get divorced. I just assume, you, you know, you, 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 you work it out and, 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 and you get the best out of it, but sooner or later, you know, you're going to get divorced. <clears throat> How many people felt like that when you got married? I know, I know your spouse may be sitting with you, but, 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 but <laughs> you, know, you know, if you really get honest with, you, with yourself, you know, you, you go into something and you, you're so far in love that you just want to ignore all of the red flags and call them red roses and the red flags all over the place. And it's like, I, I don't know if we're going to make it, but man, this feels good to go ahead and do it. And I've seen that thing turn into a car wreck, a uh, 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 pile up and everything else. Why? Nobody respected the father's house and what the father's house was telling them and what the father's house was showing them. So we're going to look at Jesus and the father. Last week, we defined relationships as a state of affairs existing between those having relations or dealings. A state of affairs existing between those uh, having relations or dealing, dealings. God did not design relationships to compete with him. God designed relationships to point us to him. Relationships will get tough. Relationships will be misunderstood. There's going to be seasons of misunderstandings. There's going to be days of misunderstandings. There's going to be moments of misunderstandings. But they're not, you know, relationships, God designed relationships to, 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 to point us to him in those times of misunderstandings. But before I understood that, <laughs> I, was, I was being directed back to my father's house. Now, I told you, I told you, I told you loudmouth ladies, they're just very difficult to, to deal with. Now, I told you, they'll spin up your money. If you don't watch them, they will spin it all up and this, that, and the other. So you, make sure you got a little something on the side, son. Make sure you got a little, little stash on the side. And I would always revert back to my father's house and try to solve the complications in my relationship. And how many people know that did not work? <laughs> You'd be some cursing Christians, just, just, just cursing one another out there. You know, God forbid we'll be honest in church. Matthew 22. It's going to be a fun series. But before we get into the dating and what it means to be married and single and all that kind of stuff, we got to get our foundation strong in this. Just some basic principles that God wants us to know. So Matthew 22. <clears throat> Glory to God. That weather was a tough little man last night, wasn't it? 
Somebody said, man, I was <laughs> in third heaven. I didn't hear no weather. <laughs> Matthew 22. <clears throat> so you got, this, you got this, this, this lawyer trying to tempt Jesus and trying to trip Jesus up as Jesus is describing to the crowd, you know, who their neighbor is and who your fellow man is. And we'll pick up this uh, story in verse 37. And Jesus said unto this smart mouth lawyer, he says, he says, he says, first he says, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment in verse 36 in the law? And then Jesus answered him. And watch the, watch the answer that Jesus gives him as far as the great commandment in the law. Jesus said unto him, you shall love the Lord thy God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it that you shall love thy neighbor to the degree you love yourself. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. Notice the first two great commandments are relationship-based. Love, love your neighbor, love your fellow man, love God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind. Love is a relationship commandment. that Jesus laid out to the lawyer. But here's the most powerful part to this. He says, your degree of love to others is based on how much you love yourself. And you'll, you'll be surprised at how much energy we as people and we as believers, uh, uh, um, no, no, not how much energy, you'll be surprised at, at the, 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 the minimal amount of investment we place in knowing ourselves. It wasn't until I was about to lose everything uh, with my wife, my family, so on and so forth, until I realized, okay, if this is going to work, brother, you've got to get to know yourself and you have to change. You know, you cannot be in a relationship and you know you have problems from your father's house and expect the other person or the spouse just to put up with it for 20 30, 40 years, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You know, one of the worst things we can do is live and die, live and die, and never get to know self. We got a word for everybody else. We got a scripture for everybody else. We got a counsel session for everybody else. But to live and die and never get to know thyself, that, that's, that's, that's real bad. So I began to know myself. And as, as I began to love myself, I was able to disseminate that love towards other people. And I seen my wife, not as my wife now, but as God's daughter. And that came out of me learning how to love myself as God's son. One of the worst mistakes I made when I first got married is I expected my wife to fill all the holes that I had in me from my father's house. I expected her to do that for that relationship to thrive. And man, when we got in church, I really Expected her to hear the word of God and, 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 and live out the word of God, not just for her, but to help me heal. How many people know you get in a lot of trouble when you charge someone to fix your brokenness and that someone is not God? So as we began to heal as a married couple, I quickly realized uh, we did a lot of things when we first got married. And our marriage was based on doing, not being. If you find yourself more happy when you go on vacation, you go out to dinner, you go and hang out, so on and so forth, but you can't find contentment in just being with one another, if being with one another is not more happier than doing things with one another, you better flip that real quick. Why? Because sooner or later, them kids are going to be out the house. And sooner or later, you don't went to Disney World, Universe, Universe Studios. You've been on 25 cruises to the Bahamas. You've seen the same little, the same little, you, you docked at the same little places, all the, uh, with Coco Bay or whatever it is. You've did it 20, 25 times. You, you, you've been to Vegas. You, you threw up the peace sign in New York. You, you, you've done it all. And then when all that dust clears, your relationship now is going to be based on, do you know how to be with one another without all the flash and the glimmer and the vacations? Can you coexist like that? Some people call it the empty nest. And when the nest gets empty, you'll see what you have. 
So Jesus says, love yourself. Now, what does it mean to love yourself in relationships? What does it mean to love yourself? That, that, that does not mean uh, I love myself. I love myself to the degree I'm just going to let people trample over me. No. No. Love yourself. You got to see yourself the way God sees you. Not the way your father seen your natural father. Not the way your mother seen you. Not the way your parents, but the way God sees you. Why? Because God knows that we're imperfect and he doesn't charge it against us. He knows that. He knows that we're flawed and he doesn't charge it against us. He still loves us. You know, so many times in relationships, we try to win people over with good deeds. And then when they don't, when they don't reciprocate those good deeds back to us, we say, you know, they're, they're faking, they're phony. No, I thought you was doing that out of your heart. So you're doing it to try to win me over? Let me give you a word. In relationships, thank you, Lord. In relationships, you need to know your corporate personality and your individual personality. Because in a corporate environment, you could be off the chain. But in an individual, on an individual basis, as far as relationship goes, you're stuck in a corner somewhere, and you don't know how to communicate as an individual. But at the party, man, you, you, you can get down. Or it could be vice versa. You're tough when it comes to in your individual personality and, and navigating relationships and engaging relationships will put you at a cookout, and my God, you can't even say three words. This is where the Christian dating breaks down because nobody wants to understand, okay, in a corporate setting, man, I can work the room. But my individual personality, I'm just, I don't even have 10 words to say if I'm standing face to face, kneecap to kneecap with somebody, sitting down on a date. I'm, I'm terrible on dating. I'm, I need to work on my individual personality. But corporately, man, you show up at church, you're smiling, you're, you're hanging out, you're volunteering, you're, you're helping folks. But man, when you sit down and look that guy or look that lady in the eyes as an individual, that relationship is going to hinge on your individual personality strength. And once you build your family, you got another small little corporate setting now. But it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to thrive off of your individual personality strength. And just based off of that, you, you know, you can slot yourself right now in this room. Man, he's right. As an individual, boy, I'm tough when it comes to personality. But in a corporate setting, I don't know too many people. Man, I, I'm, I'm just a knot on a log. You need to understand that about yourself. Somebody said, no, I don't. If you don't understand that, you will spoil your wife's business dinner. I don't know nobody in here, so I'm just trying to, man, shoot, man. I, and it's like, oh, you don't function well in the corporate setting when it comes to uh, uh, navigating relationships and people. I don't know nobody here. Hey, you want to come go with me? I mean, I, look, just go with me. I don't know nothing. Those are your friends. It's like, oh, you're real weak when it comes to, your, your corporate personality is real weak when it comes to navigating relationships, and we got to be strong in both of those. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Galatians 6 real quick. We're going to take our time in this because this is a serious subject. You know, I always tell people, God hates divorce, but he loves divorced people. God hates divorce, but he loves divorced people. He never stops loving you when relationships break down. Now, Galatians 6, uh, chapter 6, a very familiar scripture, and I really want to point this out to you because it's a relationship law. It is a relationship law. <clears throat> uh, let's pick up uh, verse uh, 6, I think. <clears throat> ah. Let's go to verse 1. Brethren, if, if, if a man be overtaken in a fault... You which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of weakness, considering yourself, lest you should also be tempted. Let me give you a relationship law. If you can ever foresee yourself needing grace and mercy for your failures, extend them every chance you get to others. <clears throat> you see men of God fall in public. You see the Kurt Franklin thing, so on and so forth. And boy, you start dogging them out. This, that, and the other. It's, it's like, uh, oh, so you don't think you're ever going to need grace or mercy in the future, huh? <laughs> you don't think you're going to need that. And you just lay into him, and it, it, it's a vulnerable moment for him in which we all have them. 
But those people don't understand Galatians 1. Galatians 6, verse 1. If any man be overtaken in a fault, you know, sometimes kids can take you there. And they ain't got to be 30 years old. They can be two years old. And they can take you there. I can recall when Marviante was growing up, I would pick him up. You know, he's having a fit. I would pick him up, and he would just squirm. Just throw his hands up, and I couldn't hold him. And, and, and I'm trying to get him under control. And, and once I get him under control, and I'm holding him, ready to turn him around, he took that head, and he threw it back. Let's just get somewhere and sit you up. All this tender book reading stuff, this book reading stuff, and you just acting out and all these personality traits they're talking about in this book, and you're just taking advantage of every situation, falling out in your little temper tantrums and all this kind of stuff. Boy, he threw that head back and hit my lip, and I said, that is it. That's it. That's it. And then gra- my grandmama came out of me. <laughs> Tore that little tail up. They'll take you there. And you could be looking at me in the church lobby like, look at, would you look at that? Not realizing, my God, I worked 14 hours. I'm trying to get here. My wife's on vacation. She went to see her mom who's going through something in, in her body, so she got to be there with her, and we're helping her pay her bills. I'm trying to be here in church with the kids. I'm not used to this, and my son is falling all over the place. He does not want to go into children's class, and man, he throws that head back, and he pops me, and people begin to judge me and say, Look at that out of control, Father. Galatians said someone should walk over to that Father and say, may I help you, sir? I've been there. I understand what you're going through. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Verse 2, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Relationships is not about just people. It's just not about people taking care of you. It's about you taking care of people too. It's about you being there for people too. It's about you picking up the phone and calling people too. My gosh, bear one another's. It's a reciprocal thing. It's a mutual thing. Anytime, a, anytime a relationship begins to fail, it's because someone feels all of the attention is owed to them. And there's nothing worse than hanging out with people and going out with people and having friends who fall apart every time you get with them. I'm like, dude, why am I having to come over here and console you every time we go out, every time we're at a church event, every time we're at the movies, I find you in a corner somewhere pouting. And you know what? It's not going to continue to be that way. Because you know what I'm going to stop doing? I'm going to stop texting you and asking you, do you want a cup of coffee? I'm going to stop testing, testing, texting and asking you if you want to go hang out with these other four brothers. Why? Because I always got to pay attention to you and make sure that your little huggy is dry. And if somebody's not paying attention to you, when we're out, you fall apart. Now I got to leave. Now my four buddies are asking me, hey, what's wrong with him? Man, I, I don't know. But here's what I do know. It'll be the last time. You stress me out like that in a corporate setting because your corporate personality won't allow you to self-correct yourself. Bury you one of those burdens, and so you fulfill the law. For if a man thinks of himself in a relationship to be something when he is really nothing, watch this, he deceives himself. In relationships, one of the worst enemies to relationships is when we have a, a, an, uh, an exaggeration of self-importance. We think more of ourselves than we should. We think just because we're educated, we know how to be a wife. We think just because we're educated, we know how to be a husband. I realized in year seven, at the point, at, at, at the, at, at the point of divorce, I realized, boy, you never read a book on how to be a husband. What, what the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians, husband, love your wife, you don't even know how to do that. Why are you try, How do you think you're going to carry out something 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and you don't even know how to be that thing? So here's the thing about marriage. When you, was, when, when you were single, you was a man. When you got a husband, when you got married, you was a husband for the first time in your life. <laughs> when you got married, you was a wife for the first time in your life. That's why you don't, you don't, look, you don't look for a man 
You don't look for a lady. Take your, spend your time learning how to be a wife or a husband if you want to be married. Learn that skill because you're going to need it. He says, he says, don't deceive yourself. Don't think of yourself in relationships higher than you should. But they didn't call me. I didn't call them. Let me tell you something. When people are reaching out to you, that's an expression of God's love. But I tell you what, you keep slapping their hands. You keep slapping their hands in that relationship, and what's going to happen? You're going to find yourself back at square one again. Man, where's all the friends? People come and they go. People come in my life, and they're out of my life. They stop calling. They stop texting. Why? Because, because, because it's, it's one way. <laughs> it's not reciprocal. <clears throat> God laid somebody on my heart. I text him. I say, hey, man, I, I, I just want you to know I believe in you. I want you to know God loves you. What is that? That's a social investment. Hey, 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 I want you to know that God, God sees what you're doing, man. He's pleased with you. That's a social investment. And then people do me the same way. But I'll tell you what, sooner or later, that thing narrows down to Peter, James, and John. And, and what happens? Uh, people who pour into you, that now you start, that, that's who you're, you're prone to deal with in intimate settings. People who pour into you, and you pour into them. People who pour into you, and you pour into them. That's why in church, you can't think that everybody's, you're going to have a personal relationship with everybody. You as a member can't think that. Me as a pastor can't think that. That is absolutely impossible to have a personal corporate relationship. Yeah, we can do that. But a personal relationship, you don't want pastors at your house every Sunday. You don't want pastors at your house on, 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 on every Thursday evening. Why? You got to look at the real housewives of Atlanta. You don't want to sit there all tensed up with him sitting there. <laughs> You, you just don't want him now. You, you, you try to look at married to medicine and trying to entertain your pastor. You're like, my God, I'm so stressed out. But him in here, he need to take his tail home so I can go ahead and, and look at my shows. And I'll be the same way. I said, my God, I really can't, you know, I ain't looking at nothing crazy, but man, I, I don't know how they can perceive me looking at married to medicine. I don't know, I don't know what they're going to think if I'm looking at this or that. I, I don't know what they're going to think. My God, you can't have a personal relationship where everybody's on your couch every day of the week, but you can have a corporate relationship. You know what your pastor's at your house all the time? It's, just, it's, just crazy. it's crazy, but the devil prays on that stuff. So verse 5, for, for, for every man shall bear his own burden. I'm sorry, verse 4. Uh, but, but let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Verse 6, let him that is taught in the word of God communicate to him that teaches in all good things. Watch this. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, he shall reap that. In your notes, all relationships have a sowing and reaping component to it. And you won't escape that. You won't escape that. Well, we got kids together. We got a family. You won't escape what you're sowing into your husband as far as his emotions. Paying attention to him. Serving your husband and vice versa. Paying attention to her emotions, her needs, and so on. You won't escape the sowing and reaping component. You are going to reap what you sow. And Paul says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. God put the sowing and reaping component in the earth. Seed time, harvest time. You actually think that you're just going to ignore someone that you say you're going to spend your whole life with. You're just going to ignore their needs and you're not going to sow into their needs. You're not going to sow into their wants. You're not going to do that, and it's going to thrive. No, you're going to reap it. And in relationships, it is a sowing and reaping component in every relationship. So when your wife is quiet, you got to ask yourself, uh, is she sowing or is she reaping? When he's quiet, you got to ask yourself, am I, am, am, am I reaping or is he sowing? It's either one or the other or both in every relationship. Oh, you're going to storm out of the house? Well, he don't do that. You're sowing. Oh, 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 what you're going to do is you're just going to spend money on your family, and, and when he get, re get ready to send money to his family, you got a problem with it. Guess what? You're sowing. You know, some spouses will interrogate the other spouse. 
if, 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 they, if they send money uh, uh, towards the needs of, uh, uh, of their family and, and their family is not quite ideal the way the other spouse thinks they should be, well, man, they're interrogating, but when their family has a need, let's dig deep. That ain't right. And I tell you what, you, if you're sowing that, you're going to reap. You're going to reap what you don't like. What is it that I don't like? He's just going to say, look, mama needs something, I'm giving it to her. Wait a minute, we got to walk in agreement. Where two or three are gathered, that, you, you're absolutely right. We won't know two or three when you send money towards your family. <laughs> you're going to reap what you sow. So there's a, there's a, there's a sowing and reaping component. <clears throat> Listen to this. This sowing and reaping component, this is, this is an ex- essential mentality if you want to live with the habits of reconciliation. Every relationship needs to have habits of reconciling, making it right, QRT, quick recovery time. But I tell you what, the Bible says the sun shall not go down on your wrath. Wrath is a different level of disagreement. Your wrath, I mean, you insulted, you threw things, you stormed out. You went out when he told you not to. You went out when she asked you not to. you just wrathful. He said, look, don't let the sun go down on stuff like that now. We disagreed about he wanted cookies in his ice cream. I bought the ice cream back. It wasn't no cookies because I ate all the cookies. He didn't know I ate the cookies, but I gave him ice cream. He turned over and went his way. I turned over and went my way. Man, we woke up, brushed our teeth together, and then we were back. That's not wrath. That's ice cream cookie disagreement. He says, now, there's a certain level of, of disagreement that you just don't play with. You just don't let the sun go down on it. He says, don't let it go down on it. Why? Because you're going to wake up. Or you're just you're going you're gonna to wake up. You're going to wake up lacking. You're going to wake up one day lacking the habits of reconciling that relationship. And all of a sudden, when that ends, I promise you, if you're married, divorce is going to start knocking on your door. Why? Because I was, I've lost faith and your ability to get yourself together and live like Christ in this relationship. I've lost, I've, I've lost faith in your ability to gather your thoughts, gather your emotions, gather your words, and not slander me and strike me down and do what you want to do and just take off towards your family and disregard what I'm trying to tell you. I've lost faith, and you listen to me, and our relationship equity is gone. Now, guess what? It's going to take a miracle of God to put it back together, and man can't do it. Somebody said, how do you know that? Because I went through it. Gave my wife everything she wanted, provided for, nine vacations a year, cars, truck, uh, a three-level house, bought a house at 24. Man, we was financially set by the time we was 30 and, and, and gave her everything except a loving husband who knew how to navigate being a husband. And guess what? She said, look, I'm going to be in love with somebody. It's just not going to be you anymore. But I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to do this. So you got to have a habit of re- reconciliation. God wants us to have a habit of quick recovery time in our relationships for them to thrive. In order to have thriving, authentic relationships, we have to buy into the principle of consequences. The principle of consequences. The principle of consequences. That's why the word says, be slow to speak. Who do we think we are in relationships where we can just hurl hurting words to people, sowing seeds, and never think we're going to reap a harvest. So here's what you need to know about the heart of man and woman in relationships. You don't control it. You just appeal to it. God deals with the heart. And when that heart is cold, when that heart is hard, when the heart is waxed gross in relationships, the Bible calls it waxed gross, it says they can't see with their eyes. They can't hear with their ears. They can't understand with their heart. What is it saying? What they used to, what they used to just, 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 just go crazy over and want to be with, they've grown cold towards it. And it didn't come from them. It came from the person sowing those types of seeds in that relationship. If you never find yourself saying, Lord, I repent the way I talk to my, my friend. Lord, I repent the way I just spoke to my husband. Lord, I repent the way I just spoke to my parents. Lord, I repent the way I just spoke to my, my, my boss. Lord, I repent the way I just spoke to my pastor. Lord, I repent the way I just spoke to that member. If you never find yourself doing that, you're, 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 you're nine times out of ten, 
you're bulling and trying to shop in your relationships. And you say stuff like this, I am the way I am, just accept me. Okay. You know who's going to accept you? Harmony.com. <laughs> Harmony.com is going to accept you. Okay, let's look, let's look, at, let's look at the Father and, and uh, <laughs> John, John 3, very familiar scripture. <clears throat> John 3. I know, I know in my marriage, I can be talking and saying stuff, and, and the Holy Spirit is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Easy now. I know in my marriage, I can be, she can be talking, I'm ignoring the Holy Spirit. Go, whoa, 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 don't play with that now. Easy now. And guess what? There's a fear and a tremor that comes over me. You know why? You know why, you know why it comes over me? Because I respect the law of sowing and reaping in my marriage. So you better course correct it now. Please don't think that 24 years you can just talk and do, to do it, say what you want to. Matter of fact, the longer it goes, the more mature they should be becoming. You may get away with that stuff when they're 30, but let them hit 40, 30, 35, 40. Now all of a sudden, where's the passwords at? Where's the money at? What do you mean where's the money at? You know I take care of the money. No, no, no. Where's it at? <laughs> I want to know what you're doing, what you're spending, what we're spending. Why? Because as time goes on, people mature in relationships, and you got to be ready for that. <clears throat> in your notes, um, <clears throat> so we're, go we're going to go to we're at John 13, but we're going to pull a lesson out of John 13, and that lesson is going to be, in your notes, write this down, what it means to give and what it means to sacrifice in relationships. We're learning from the Father. We're, we're learning from their relationship, Jesus and the Father. We're learning from their relationship. So John 3, very familiar scripture. And, and look at this now. Look at how it all started. For, verse 16. For God so loved, relationship word, the world that he gave, relationship word, his only begotten son, that so whosoever believed on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In all relationships, you're going to be giving and you're going to be sacrificing. When God sent his only begotten son, he was giving his son. He was sacrificing his only begotten son so that you and I can be free in Christ. Look at that relationship. Giving and sacrificing. That's why when the wife says, can you swing by the daycare and pick the kids up, guess what? It's a sacrifice. You got to give of yourself. You can't just say, my God. Because I used to think, uh, why, is, why are you encroaching on my schedule and on my day to drop the kids off? You can't do that. You can't pick them up. Oh, so you want me to swing by, sit in traffic, and, get, and, and, and pick? Yep, that's exactly what I'm asking you. I'm asking you to sacrifice the way God did. I'm asking you to give of yourself the way God did. I told my wife, and she's, she's a dandy at it now. She's outside with me. She's planting with me. She's in the yard with me. Guess what? I know it's a sacrifice. I know she's giving of herself, but it means something to me. It means something to me. There's more to hopping in the car going to get a big steak with your wife, more to hopping in the car and going out to eat lunch with your wife, more to hopping in the car going out to eat lunch with your husband. Sometimes you got to hop in some... Hop in some work clothes and come on out there with your gloves and, and, and let's, 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 let's pull these weeds out of this flower bed. It's important to me. Hey, that, that's your world out there. This my world in here. And I have your food cooking. No, I want you out here with me for these three hours. Why? Because I'm in there with you cleaning out closets. I'm in there with you cleaning out cabinets. I'm in there with you painting walls. I'm in there with you. But you got to sacrifice to have a healthy, thriving relationship, and God sacrifices and gave his only begotten son so that we may be free. You'll be, you, you'll be shocked at how much freedom comes into your relationships when you're always giving of yourself, and you understand the reciprocal nature of that. I tell my wife sometimes, I call her out there, I say, I got, your, I got your lawn chair right there, I got the drop cord right there, I got your computer plugged up. She said, what do you want me to do? I said, just sit there so I can see you while I watch this car. Now, now pull that skirt up a little bit so I can see your legs. <laughs> you know, God forbid we'll be honest in church. Every now and then just get up and walk and twirl a little bit. 
What's the girl name on Atlanta? Twirl like Kenya Moore. Twirl for me so I can see you in that sundress. Let me, let me just smell the peach blossom lotion you got on. Let me just, let me just smell it while I'm out here washing the car. And somebody says, what are you doing? I'm getting ready for coming attractions. And I, wanna, and I want her out there with me. Nothing wrong with that. And she comes out, guess what? She could be in the house. She wouldn't be in the house, but she's, she's giving of herself. She's sacrificing. Because why? She learned that from John 3. God gave his only begotten son. Matthew 3. <clears throat> so we got giving and sacrificing in relationships. And if you're dating, you better look for that. You got to look for that. I told, my, uh, I told my kids, I said, listen, here, here's one thing about dating and, and, and finding you a suitor. Uh, you got to understand your life habits. And if you think you're going to break your life habits over love, no, you're going to be torn. I said, sorry, your life habits, Marvion Tate, your life habits, one of them is God is first in your life. You're in church, you're serving in church, so on and so forth, and now you can come across somebody. You can get goo goo gaga loved up and all that kind of stuff, but 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 if if they're asking you to break that life habit for them, that's going to be a tearing. That, that, that that's that's going to be a tearing. That's like asking a Jewish guy, uh, uh, you know, undo yourself to love me. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I, I, I can't. That, that's that's my life. I, I I can't do that. What do you mean you can't do it? I mean we're in love. Yeah, I can't. I cannot do that. <clears throat> so you got to pay attention to those. And you got to pay attention to the person that you got have an interest in. And don't just talk about love and Google Gaga. Talk about that day of their week. So, so, so how did your day go? What am I listening for? I'm listening for your life habits. Or I, you know, I played PS4 with the boys. You know, we do that every Wednesday night. Every Thursday, we do, do a little PS4, PS5. We played. Oh, okay. So, so what happened Sunday? Ah, uh, Sunday, man. I, oh, man, my head was hurting so bad. I, Kind of got tips last night. My head was hurting so bad. Oh, God. You hear that for 30 days? That's his life habits. And, and, and without him laying it out to you, you can kind of ask the right questions and, mon- and, and observe properly, and you can see this person's life habits are these things. And I don't think we can coexist because I can't break mine. And it may be hard to get him to adapt to mine, or it may be hard to get her to adapt to mine. <clears throat> Matthew 3. In every relationship, you got to have validation. You got to be validated. One thing I know about women coming out of a single home with no father in the house, validation from man is lacking. If the grandfather didn't do it, if the uncle didn't do it, it's, it's going to be lacking, and you got to know how to validate her. You got to know how to validate that man. You got to know how to validate your friend. Everybody want to be validated that I am somebody. Everybody wants to be validated. But guess what? If you don't get that as a child, you, 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 you'll seek it out. And people seek it out in games. People see, seek it out on, 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 on black market websites. And, and you find out 30 years later that this guy was an underground whatever he was. And he was a, a great guy in public. But back in the booth in the corner, he was seeking validation by sleeping around with escorts all his life. And people go, my God, what happened? Well, he got in there and she just validated him. Why? Because he was bankrupt on validation. And when people are bankrupt on validation in relationships, we got to have eyes to see that. And go, okay, okay, you're not nagging. You, you, you're, not a, you're not a little whiner. But in, in, in our relationships, we got to have validation. Amen? So Matthew 3. Are you still out there? Verse 15. So John is baptizing Jesus, verse 15. And Jesus answered, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for for thus is it becometh uh, us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending down like a dove and lightning upon him. Verse 7. Watch this validation now. Jesus and the Father. And a voice from heaven. Watch this. Saying. 
Validation is not just in gifts. Validation is not just in providing for your wife. It's not just providing for your children, but it's in saying this. Look at that. This is my beloved son. Watch this now. In whom, watch him remove all the questions from Jesus. I'm well pleased. We're learning from this relationship. Validation is a key component in relationships. My kids will walk out of the house and they'll just walk by and say, Dad, I just want you to know you're doing a good job. Dad, I want you to know I, I don't take you for granted around here. Dad, Dad I want you to know I, we don't take you for granted. Dad, I want you to know da da da. Dad, Dad, man, what you did and that. Dad, and, and, and my wife, what, what, what she constantly does it. Derek, I need you to know this. Derek, I'm thankful for you. Derek, I'm grateful for you. I'm like, man, I'm alive, huh? Good grace is alive, huh? I'm going to go from six one to seven foot five. You keep talking like that. My God, what do you want? <laughs> just keep on giving it to me. Validate me. Just, 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 just keep on giving it to me. Why? Because human beings want validation. And in relationships, if you don't have a validation component and you have a need to be validated all the time, you're going to wear the other person out. It's got to be reciprocal. And, and God says, look, this is my son. He's not just a son in whom I'm well pleased with. Do you know what your children, I love you, is, 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 is more than I love you when it comes to validation? Do you understand that? It's when you see their strengths. It's when you see them giving and sacrificing. It's when you see what they're good at. It's when you see them opening the door for an elderly person. It's when you see them walk in the room and know how to work the room and speak to adults and, and care themselves like adults in an adult environment. It's when you pull them aside and go, I want you to know, the way you communicate with adults, it just blesses my heart. You know what that is? It's validation. I want you to know, you may think that your legs are too big, whatever it is. I want you to know, you're, I wish I had well-defined legs like yours. I want you to know, your, your hair is just, I, the color of your hair. I want you to know that, and, and man, I want you to know that me and your father were so proud of you. Why? Because you just got up and you made sure that trash is on the curb, so on and so forth. If we didn't have to ask you, you are becoming a man of responsibility. You know what that is? It's validation. It's validation. Somebody said, what's the enemy to validation? The number one enemy when it comes to men, young men, the number one enemy to validation when it comes to young men is mothers who protect and not discipline. And when the husband tries or the man tries to step in or the grandfather tries to say, no, we're validating them, but you, 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 you think you're validating, you're protecting, and you're not disciplining. Somebody says, how do you know that? Because I lived it. I have to tell my wife, whoa, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> just, just hold on now. Because what she's trying to do is, you know how it is. You know how your mamas do. Just so you know, your daddy, when you walk in that house, you text him, just so you know. I'm, I'm just letting you know right now. When you walk in the house, make sure you go straight to your room and you clean it. Just so you know, your dad is watching now. You can clean that car in three weeks. He's just, just so you know, you need to. And, 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 and what are they doing? They're trying to protect and losing sight. Where's the discipline at? Why are you having to constantly do this? You are enabling this young man. You're enabling this young woman doing that. And dads do it with their daughters. You're enabling them. Why? Because, because you want to validate the, 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 you want to validate, even if they don't know how to do it, we understand the, the, the law of learning. We know it's going to be awkward for her at 10 years old to take control and make sure no dishes are in that sink. She washed those dishes. Guess what? When she does it one time, validate. But if you start protecting with no discipline, what you're doing is you're stunting their growth. And young men get around men, and they don't know how to carry themselves. Why? Because a lot of times, mama's in the name of protecting the son with no discipline, guess what? They call it validation, and it enables them to grow as young men. So my wife kind of took the back seat, and now, you know, I'm quite sure she's got a way of saying stuff in the background, but she understands now there's just certain things he's going to give you that I can't. So, you know, validation, validation is acknowledgement of significance. In every relationship, 
you want to make sure that you're giving acknowledgement of their significance. Of their significance. I notice you just come out here and you just, you just, you, you, last week you told us, let's give the music ministry a round of applause. The week before that, you're talking about the parking lot folks, let's just thank God for them. Week before that, just let's thank God for Minister Nikki. Oh, I mean, why? Why? I'm acknowledging their significance to this church. And that's what validation is. And with our kids and with our husband, with our spouses, with our co-workers, with our boss, subordinates, we got to acknowledge their significance. So, man, I thank God for it. When I ask for a report, you have it on time. And if you have a boss and they're nice to you and they bring out the best in you, guess what? Acknowledge that to them. I just want you to know the way you handled that and spoke to me, that means a lot to me. Why? Because some superiors send people home with knots in their stomachs. And they call it getting things done. You're getting things done, and you're going to invite an AR-15 into the front door. Why? Because when they go crazy, what they're going to think about is, who was the mean one? Who talked down to me? Who made me feel lower than low in the midst of the group? Who did that? That's what they look for. So validation. Acknowledging people's significance. Luke 2. As we wrap up here. We're not going to get through this today. In relationships, it takes commitment, unwavering commitment. And I know I may, may be referring to a marriage, but, but marriage is, is, is a very high covenant. And when, when my wife says, you know what, I'm going to lose my last name, and I'm going to take upon yours, Derek. Boy, that's a major commitment right there. And on my end, I said, you know, as my wife, I'm marrying your past, your present, and I declare I'm going to take care of your future. Come hell or high water. That's one heck of a commitment. <clears throat> and every relationship has to have some level of commitment to it. <clears throat> Luke 2. Somebody give me an amen up in here. Amen. Listen, in this church, we excel in God and we excel in life. No need to know how to speak in tongues and you can't hold a relationship down. Pray to paint off the wall, but nobody wants to hang out with you. Wow. I mean, it, it, that, that, that does no good. No, the word forwards and backwards, but because you're not likable, you can't even witness Christ to people. They pick right up on it. Why? Because you put yourself up here and put them down here, they pick right up on it. <clears throat> hmm. Let me say this to you. You better make sure people are significant that you're in contact with. I was outside, I was outside doing something last week, and the pool guy across the street came out. He, he gave a quote to maintain somebody's pool, and he came out, and I was washing the car. And this pool guy, he looks up, he says, hey, how you doing over there? I said, I'm, I'm doing good. He said, man, it's a nice day out here. I said, yes, it is. He said, boy, you got it clean over there. I said, yes, I do. He said, I'll tell you what you do. Have a great day, man. Have a good one now. I said, you do the same. And when he, when he drove off, she walked out. I said, can I ask you a question? She said, what is it? Because y'all, I'm always learning from life. I said, can I ask you a question? I said, if we had a pool in the back, and I told you that a pool guy who didn't know me from Adam, and, and we had a pool guy who barely speaks to us, and a pool guy across the street spoke to me, acknowledged what I was doing, complimented what I was doing, told me to have a good day, would you want to hire that guy to do our pool? She said, well, in a heartbeat. What was she saying? You mean to tell me you have a service and you're going to just ignore who I am? You're not going to even speak to me next door? And you're going to dance your tail over here and knock on my door and say, hey, anytime you need to say, man, you pulled up three times. I walked out there. You ignored me. There, there, there's, a, there's a couple in our neighborhood who are realtors, and, and, and man, they, 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 they just... They just have it. They have it sold up. <laughs> I mean, every, every house I look so they're on it. But I tell you what, sold a house across the street. I walk out there. You know, I hate to wave and get ignored. I hate to nod and get ignored. I don't like that. 
especially in the neighborhood when you, you, you got a service going around. I was like, you know, nothing. Make eye contact, nothing. I said to myself, you ain't never got to worry about listing nothing for us. You dance your tail, I don't care if you sell 50 houses in here. You have the inability to engage me just as a human being, making eye contact, and you don't speak, but you want, you, you want the money off the thing, don't you? Nope, nope, nope. And boy, if we're dealing with people, we're offering a service, know this. Hey, I, I, I paint houses. Yeah, but my God, you don't speak to nobody. Hey, I do nails. Yeah, but you walk by every sister in the church, don't even speak to them. I noticed your nails done. Who does your nails? Oh, I got a girl who do, do, do them in time center. Come by and see me sometime. So, so the only time you engage me is when you want money out of my pocket. No way, Jose. You got to build rapport. You got to build relationships. You got you to you acknowledge folks. You got to work the room. You got to do all that kind of stuff. But why? What are you doing? You're putting customers in your future. But boy, when you're stuck up, don't speak to nobody, don't hang out with nobody, won't acknowledge nobody, then all of a sudden, man, you want to lay my foundation to the pool? No way. I'm going to choose the guy who's been engaging me. I'm going to choose the guy who's been acknowledging me. I'm going to choose the guy who, who, who acknowledged my existence right next door. That's who I'm going to choose. So I said, oh, my God, look at you. No, that is human behavior 101. You have to be on people's mind when they think of a service. Luke 2, my gosh. <sighs> Luke 2, uh, verse 39. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Talking to his family outside his door, Jesus says, how is it that you sought me? Don't you know I must be about my father's business? Write the word commitment down. There has to be a commitment to the original intent in a relationship. And Jesus was telling his family, the original intent was when I was sent here by my Father, which is in heaven, was to save mankind. And if you think that a family reunion is going to take precedence over what I'm doing right now, nope. Why? I'm committed to the original intent of the relationship. What's my original intent of my marriage? Go back and look at it. And what did you say at that altar? That's your original intent. When temptation comes, go back to your original intent. When frustration comes, go back to your original intent because you made a covenant on that altar. Go back to it. It's going to be hard to get through this. I know it's going to take giving and sacrifice. I understand that. But you got to go back to it. Jesus, look, don't you guys know I'm about my father's business? I'm committed to the original intent. <clears throat> That's why when you start dating somebody and they try to take, take your parents' counsel out of, out, out of your life, they're trying to move, remove you from the original intent of your parents in your life. And guess what? You got to tell that person, no way, Jose. You're not the right one. You're fine, but it's not, you're not the one. So it takes commitment. Let me rattle off some thoughts to you. <clears throat> Thought number one. When relationships fall, fail, or falter, our perceptions of God can't be predicated on the shortcomings of man. Our perception of God the Father can't be predicated on the shortcomings of man. It's like, man, look, I went to that church. I went to this church over here. They did this. They did that, so on and so forth. Man failed. Man faltered. Man slipped. But your perceptions of God cannot be predicated upon that. Here my husband is talking about he loved the Lord, he do all this stuff, da 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 and I caught him in, and, and God, I just don't want nothing else to do with you. Whoa, 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 whoa. The shortcomings of man in a relationship, your perceptions of God cannot be predicated on that. Do you get what I'm saying? It cannot be predicated on that. When relationships fail or falter, our perceptions of God can't be predicated on the shortcomings of man. Because what, what happens is, in church, when we see... People fall. People slip. We don't restore them the way Galatians told us to do. We exploit their faults. And we just don't exploit their faults. We begin to question their God firstness now. I wonder if they really love God. Now, how in the world can God restore that? 
how can those parents walk in with their teenage daughter and I see the little bump on her belly and they're just praising God with her? Somebody needs to go over there, sit your tail down. Sit down, leave them alone. Those parents got that under control. God still loved that teenage girl. She failed, she had a fault, that's okay. But I tell you what, you start looking at God and start looking at the parents like, man, what did y'all do? Look, the shortcomings of man, you, 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 your perception of God can't be predicated upon that. And if it is in relationships, you'll never have any. Well, 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 I just, man, I just, I just seen some flaws and imperfections. So, you know, guess what, man? I, I don't take that church thing serious no more. I don't take that God thing serious no more. It's just me and God got our thing going on because I can't trust nobody. They're all hypocrites. You're in the all. It's only one perfect man. What is that? Your perception of God at church now are all based on the shortcomings of man. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Is it hot in here or is it just me? God have mercy. Okay, now wait a minute. What did I say, Luke, Luke 2? Did I read verse 49? 39, Lord, have mercy. No, no. I said 39, but I read 49, right? Okay, okay, okay. I read the right one, but I said the wrong one. Your relationship with God can't be predicated on the shortcomings of man. It's just that simple. <laughs> it's just like me saying, hey, boy, so-and-so, they ain't come to church today. Man, they ain't serious about God. I, man, what are you talking about? in their pajamas online watching the service? Well, God, I don't know if they... Yeah, but man, what are you saying? Your relationship with God can't be predicated on the shortcomings of man. It can't. Thought number two. <clears throat> Thought number two. Turn down your fear of failure. When it comes to relationships, turn down your fear of failure and turn up your fear of missing. Missing what? Missing out on what you could be in a relationship, what you could do in a relationship, and what you could have in your relationships. So many people are afraid to fail in relationships. You need to, you need to change that narrative. And you need to turn up the volume on the wife you could be if you go ahead and just roll over and just say, you know what, God, if man takes advantage of me, you're going to take care of me. I know my father wasn't in my life, and I give my husband a rough time, but I tell you what, I'm a woman of vulnerability right now. I'm not going to be so stern on everything. I'm not going to be so difficult on everything, because what's happening is I have a fear that he's going to take advantage of me. I have a fear that he's controlling me. You've got to let that go, and you've got to turn the volume on. But what kind of wife can I be, would I be, if I just let that stuff go? Ooh-wee! That brother wake up with smoke coming out of his ears. <laughs> Thought number three. <clears throat> Listen to me. There's always an organic consistency between the seeds of words and actions we plant in our relationships. There's always this organic consistency in the seeds we plant in our relationships. What does that word organic mean? It's, 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 it's happening. Organically. I don't see it right now. It's happening, though. I talk to my husband any kind of way, and he's still. It's happening, though. There's an organic consistency in the seeds we plant in relationships, and the harvest is going to come back. It's happening. And, and, and what happens is I used to say things and, 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 and charge my wife, walk high with the Lord and get over it. It was in the heat of the moment, and I just did it. And it's like, no, 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 no. Before you say anything, gather your words carefully. I don't care how much pressure you're under. You know what I'm talking about. You're working, and your spouse walks in, and you're trying to work. You're on a conference call. You're trying to work. Shut the, shut the, shut the door. What are you in for anyway? Man, get out of here. It's like, man, I, shut up. I just, man, I'm lying. Hey, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get the, get, 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 get. And it's like, oh, boy. <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, my God, I've seen guys on multi-billion dollar corporations, little son, run in on Zoom. 
It's like, hey, hey, hey guys, give me, give me a minute. Uh, uh, 18 million viewers, give me a minute. My son, what, what do you want, son? Okay, here you go. Going out of the room. As I was saying, LeBron James, da, da, da. and man, I walk in. Well, she walks in at our house in the office, and we just act like we got 25 million viewers. <laughs> and we're not human. There's an organic consistency when you sow those kind of seeds. It's nothing like a grown man getting ran out of a room. Just get out. Woof. I said, man, I said, I said you know what? <laughs> you ain't never got to worry about me. I said, well, let me give you my eight little things before you go on this little Zoom call. So if I need something, just, just text me back because I am not. Open that door. She says the same thing. There's an organic consistency in the seeds we sow, of the seeds of words and actions we plant in our relationships. Last thing. <clears throat> Write this down. I want you to chew on it all week. Half of knowing who you are is knowing who you are not. Remember I talked about the corporate personality and individual personality? Half of knowing who you are in those two arenas is knowing who you're not. And I'm here to tell you, your relationship will begin to thrive when you understand who you are not. Where are we eating at? Can't organize nothing. Don't know the menu. Hadn't texted the menu. Not going to text directions. Can't do the reservation. But somehow or another, you don't know that you're not that person. Where are we eating at this time? What do you mean? Why is the head? Why, why is all of that? I'm just saying, I, I need to know where we're eating at. Okay, do you want to do it? Do, do, do you know that you're not the organizer of groups? Once you understand that, you're going you, you're to begin to know who you are. And it's like the person that, 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 it's like, that's not you. We're going on vacation? Yeah. I'll tell you what, I, I, I lock down the hotels, and I get, I get the group, I get all the rates. So that's not you. Know that, know that that's not you. And you won't be offended. When the, you won't be offended. The number one questioner, the most difficult person, when the rates come back, just know that you're not the researcher of that kind of stuff and the disseminator of the cl- with clarity, that information, it's just not you. So let Sally do all that, that, that trip planning. Why Sally? Why she got to lead everything? Because you know who you're not. You know who you're not. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Half of knowing who you are is knowing who you're not. You know you're not the strongest one in the finances. You know that, but yet and still, you want to lead in them. You're not the strongest one. What it is, you fear you're going to be controlled with them. And I tell you what, the other party's got to own them to, have you told any lies to him or her about the finances? Okay, well, that's why she questioned you so much. Derek, how much we got in the bank? Uh, I think it's, no, no, I see that, uh, uh, that thing we just bought. I just, how much was it? I think it was 79, something like that. How much, so, so what did that bring us to? Ah, uh, I don't know. I, I think I bought the insurance with it. I think the insurance was two thirty nine for two years or something like that. She said, I seen it on the thing. It was like $400. I'm trying to figure out. I thought the ceiling fan was going to be $79. We just agreed. Home Depot, 79 bucks. Fan cooler room. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I got to go back and look at it. You're lying. <laughs> and she knows you're lying. So the next time you try to lead her, when she questions, her, what, what are we doing now? She's not questioning your ability to do it. She's questioning your ability to tell the truth. Half of knowing who you are is knowing who you're not. Were you blessed by the word of God?